After the chocolate shop, we moved over to our first partial exterior shot. Now, up until this point, we've been working indoors and the ambient lighting was basically controllable uh, without too much hassle. At this point, we moved outdoors and we were trying to shoot into a restaurant and create a nighttime vibe, but it was still at about, I guess then three o'clock in the afternoon. There was a lot of ambient in the sky and we needed to bring in some huge frames just to black out the family because they were gonna be walking past the window. So they needed to feel like they were walking at night. So we needed all of the light off them. We needed to block all of the light that was coming through the window on the right hand side, which was very blue. And we were trying to go for a really warm tungsten vibe. We flew a 1K gem ball out on our big boom arm and that sat kind of in between all of the people who were either sitting at the table here by the window or sitting in the background, gave everyone a nice edge light and was powerful enough to kick onto the family as well. So really that setup is just a little bit of negative fill. Take out all of the ambient, take out all the reflections in the glass and then a little bit from the gem ball just giving that warm glow. Very simple setup. Here is still moving, we have a handy little box of tricks which we tried to take out on every shoot. It's called the Cool Lighting Box. In this box we have LED bulbs, we have uh, sort of fairy lights, net lights, LED strips, all the kind of things which aren't our regular lighting instruments but can add something to a shoot or be really handy to get you out of a tough spot. Now here, we needed to get something more Christmassy in because it was feeling a little bit um, sterile. We didn't have enough of a Christmas vibe. So we called on the cool lighting box, got a runner to bring it down, and the production crew set up a net of lights in the background on the rear wall, just to give a bit more uh, separation and layering to what was going on so it didn't feel too flat. When you are working in the daytime, trying to get a nighttime ambient feel, you do need to block out as much as possible. But at the same time, if a little bit creeps through, it just lose the blacks a little bit if you've got enough level from your key light, which in this case was tungsten. So having that uh, tiny bit of blue in there wasn't a bad thing. The weather was with us on this. If it had been a bright sunny day, then we'd have had a lot more sky ambience coming in and we'd need to do a lot more to control it. But again, a very simple setup, 1K gem ball, boomed out, and that pretty much does it with a little bit of neg fill and some practical lights in the background. It's all about being efficient with those lighting strokes and cutting what you can, and then relying on one simple lighting stroke to do the rest. In the next part, we're finally dealing with our magical Christmas scene, using some big lights, a jib crane, and lots of falling snow. <laughs>